Great. 432, are we missing anybody? No. Okay, this is our budget work session. I'll call the meeting to order. I'm Grace Lestrat, the FK Supervisor. For Slater, please call the roll. Treasurer Pierce. Here. Trustee Kessel. Here. Trustee McDonald. Here. Trustee Shipley. Present. Trustee Hardhook. Here. Ms. Slater. Here. Supervisor West. Here. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. <laughs> Pledge of Allegiance to the United States of America. This is easy to hold me to the three minute comment, Mark, because as Trustee Kessel just observed, in the absence of getting any material in advance of the meeting uh, through the public process, um, it's hard to make any comment on it. I did review last year's material 
and I did get copies of some of this year's materials um, from several of the trustees. And I just want to be put myself on record as saying, if you want to build trust with the community, you can't do it this way, the way you were proposing to do it. Thank you. If there are no more comments, we'll do the second step, section at the end, Article 4, fiscal year 2022 Township Board Project. I'm sorry. No, that's okay. No, no, no I'm, I'm sorry. I just I just want him to be able to raise his hand again. Lower hand, there you go. Sorry. Right. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Manager Swayze, we'll turn it over to you. Great, thank you. So here we are again. Uh, this is our fiscal year 2022 uh, uh, budget workshop. I appreciate you guys all being patient with me as I work through the process and um, being able to meet on short notice. Uh, so uh, a couple of things prepared. Uh, I did send all of you the line item budget, also have the presentation uh, that we'll go through tonight, and there are uh, paper copies if you didn't grab them on the way in. <coughs> you got one right there. Yeah, that one? Oh, okay. And the line item budget is over there as well. Thank you. So we're going to start out talking about our general fund. Uh, so the general fund covers uh, typically all of the funds that you think of that are funded through tax dollars. Uh, not to say there isn't. Um, some revenues associated with some of these activities, uh, but mostly it's going to be tax dollars or um, other revenue sources. So this includes the township board, our supervisor manager department, clerk, treasurer, assessing, elections, buildings and grounds, cemetery, our administrative department, drains, roads, yard waste removal, street lights, transportation, planning, parks, historical, benefits and insurance that support our general fund employees, capital outlay and debt service. All right, so we're gonna first focus on our real and property, uh, real and personal property revenues. Uh, and good to see that these are generally trending up. So you're gonna see a lot of graphs that look like this when you go through the presentation. Uh, typically I provide five years of information, uh, the three most recently audited years, the current year, uh, the amended budget for the year that we're currently in, and then, of course, what we're proposing for next year. So uh, this, just like all the other tax revenue numbers, are based on a formula. Um, so you have our taxable value of the township uh, and then multiplied by our, our rates. So uh, you can see that they, we have this nice trend upward. Uh, looking at 2021, uh, we are at 1.57 million, going up to 1.614 million. Uh, and this combines two line items. Uh, both our real property uh, line item and then our personal property tax line item as well. In our budget, we separate that out because of the uh, personal property uh, tax reform that we experienced in 2013. Um, so that personal property number is eventually going to whittle down to the point where it is only um, large scale commercial personal property and utility personal property. So we're kind of in that 10 year time frame right now where our industrial property is slowly coming off the rolls. If you remember in 2013, they said, anything that was 10 years and older is off the rolls. Anything that's new is not going on the rolls. And then we're gonna roll off this 10 year sweet spot uh, as that comes in. And uh, I'll explain that a little bit more in a bit and how we get, uh, how we are able to uh, recover those funds as well. Uh, next one is revenue sharing. So, um, you can see 2018, 2019, 2020. Uh, 2020, uh, the original budget for this revenue sharing, if you remember back then, uh, was up over $1.6 million. And the state started to scale back that revenue sharing because that's when the pandemic started. And our revenue sharing is based solely on tax receipts in our population. So um, you know, when we had this budget presentation in 2020, this number was up a little bit higher. It got scaled down. And then 2021, uh, our amended budget right now shows $1.549 million. I anticipate when it's all said and done, this number will be a little bit higher. 
However, we don't know what our last revenue sharing payment is until the end of February, basically. Uh, so right before we close the books in preparation for our audit, that's when we find out. The way it's trending right now, this number should be higher, uh, but we won't, we won't change that until we know for certain. <coughs> so kind of tale of uh, two uh, numbers for 2022. So this is, uh, and I'm able to pull all of this information out of the State of Michigan Treasury website. So basically says based on their budget, how much we're anticipating and getting. Uh, what the, their numbers don't include though, are the census updates. So the census was updated in 2020. We saw significant population population growth in Cascade Township, about 14%. Uh, so we are set to have our constitutional revenue sharing go up, what I think will be pretty significant. Uh, no idea what that is yet. Um, and they told us they won't have updated numbers for us in February. But the nice thing is, is that they do say that they will pay payments retroactively back into the beginning of the state's fiscal year, which is October of 2021. So uh, we'll get a, um, a callback payment and then higher payments going forward. So that's not included in the budget yet, uh, but my hopes is, is that a majority of that can be used to offset what our debt service payments end up being for the fire station uh, when we eventually uh, go through that process. And here's our over, overall general fund revenues. Uh, again, you can see we uh, uh, topped out in 2020 at 5.261 million, uh, a drop down in 2021 as we saw some of our uh, revenues depreciate, specifically that state shared revenue sharing and our interest uh, were two that took a, a hit, and then we're creeping back up in 2022. Uh, so some items of note, I, I talked a lot about these already. Uh, the real property tax revenues are up 3.48%. Uh, you'll see that number um, time and time again as we look at our um, tax funds, um, which, is a, which is a good number. Um, it's uh, pretty balanced out between uh, inflationary, uh, inflation for our, um, our residents and our businesses that didn't do any improvements to their uh, their houses or their buildings, they saw their tax bills go up 1.4%, uh, which means that just over 2% is new building in the township, uh, which is a, it's a good number. When we have this meeting again next year, uh, this number will go up significantly. Uh, I've heard the inflationary number is going to be somewhere between 4 and 5% next year, so um, that'll be going up. It's been a long time since we've had an inflationary number uh, be that large. Uh, so our personal property tax revenues are down. 6.36%, uh, but, again, but again, that's expected, right? So we have this personal property that's continuing to go off the rolls, um, and where you see that offset is our local government uh, uh, local government reimbursements. Uh, so the community stabilization, stabilization share uh, is estimated this year at $61,480. Um, that is line item 573. Um, so it went up 14.24%, uh, or just over seven, uh, $7,600. Uh, so you can see we lose $6,600 in personal property tax revenue, but we gain $7,600 in um, local community stabilization share. So uh, it, it, that's a net increase for us. And we're going to continue to see that for the, the next couple of years as that personal property rolls off. Uh, and again, we talked about the state shared revenue program uh, based on the state of Michigan Treasury estimates. Uh, they've indicated their sales tax receipts have returned to pre-COVID levels. Uh, again, I think that we'll see more than we budgeted for 2021. Um, and then when the census numbers come out, we'll certainly see more than we were budgeting for 2022. And that state shared revenue line item actually has two different programs in it. So you have our constitutional revenue sharing that's based strictly on the state constitution formula. Uh, they, have to pay, they have to pay us based on that formula. We also get uh, just over $61,000 in what's called city, village, township revenue sharing program. Uh, for those that have been local, in local government for a while, that's the old statutory revenue sharing program uh, where they allocate it each year as part of the state budget rather than it being based on the formula. Uh, we are actually... Um, processed out of the statutory revenue share, sharing program back in the early 2000s uh, and then around 2014 through some good work with the uh, township 
Michigan Township Association, uh, they started adding them back in. So we're one, uh, one of about 150 townships in the state right now that gets a bit of an allocation through the city village uh, township revenue sharing program as well. Uh, so some other line items uh, in revenues that I just wanted to point out. Uh, so I'm not going to go over every single line item as we're going through this. Uh, I'll point out the ones that are significant or have significant changes. If I don't touch one that you're interested in, please stop me so I can talk a little bit more about it. Uh, but our cable revenue peg fees are going to continue to go down. Those revenues are declining uh, because of cord cutters. Uh, so again, the nuance in the uh, cable and peg fee thing is that the franchise fees are only based on the portion of the bill that goes towards cable TV. So because internet is not a regulated utility, the franchise fee isn't applied to that. So as we get more and more people that cut the cable uh, and go to YouTube TV or Hulu TV or something like that, uh, we'll continue to see those um, uh, cable revenue and peg fee uh, go down. Um, you're going to hear this time and time again as we go through our funds as well. Uh, it's really a bad time to be trying to earn uh, interest on liquid funds, uh, which is, or even on CDs, which are really the only two things that we have access to as investment tools. Uh, liquid fund uh, uh, interest rates are uh, super low, uh, less than a tenth of a percent, um, and uh, our CD margins are incredibly thin as well. Most of the CDs out there are half. So, um, however, nobody complains about the borrowing rate. <laughs> <laughs> nobody complains about the borrowing rate. Yeah. That is true. And hopefully, we'll see the benefit of that in the uh, bond for a fire station project. Um, but it is, you know, it's, you know, we do maintain pretty high fund balances in all our funds. So it's uh, definitely nice when those interest rates are high and we continue to reap the benefits of that. Uh, however, this is not going to be one of those years. Uh, so we'll talk a little bit about this when we get to the uh, election section of the budget as well, uh, but we do get reimbursed for the primary election. Uh, so we go through the process and we get through election, you'll see that we have a higher cost again this year as we continue that up, down, up, down, uh, as we have uh, general election years and non-general election years. Uh, but the nice thing is the state does reimburse us for the primary election. It's based on a formula and there's a whole set of uh, documents that you have to submit to the state. Uh, Sue and her team, team do a great job doing that, uh, but we're anticipating being reimbursed for one of the two elections that we're running this year. Uh, we talked a little bit about it at the last township board meeting. So uh, for the past couple of years, we've used a transfer from the police department to help fund the assistant township manager position. Uh, we'll talk about it when we get to the supervisor manager section, but I'm not recommending that position be filled this year. Uh, I have some other ideas for, for that position. So as that uh, I am not recommending any transfer from the police fund into the general fund budget again this year. So, um, I, I have a question on that one. I'd like to see a transfer from the general fund back to the police department, the police fund for what we have taken out of there. And I've got $112,223 that I believe was misappropriated based on the language of the ballot. So I want to see that one come back. <laughs> Yeah, so we'll be talking to the personnel finance committee about that as part of the budget amendments. Okay. So when the when we have the meeting on the 15th, there'll be two different budget actions. There'll be the budget amendments that'll happen and the financial actions, uh, which will be for uh, budgeting this year. So if we did want to make a change to that, that would be the appropriate time to do that. Wait, say that again, Ben. Walk slow down and can't repeat. Yeah. So when we have our board meeting on the 15th, there'll be two different budget related actions. Uh, the first one will be our 2021 budget amendments, which will happen in the financial section of the agenda. So those are things that we want to do to the budget this year. So if we want to take the action that uh, Trustee Nordic is recommending, I would recommend that it be done as a budget amendment to the 2021 budget, uh, rather than waiting to the 2022 budget to, to take care of it. When would the discussion at the board level happen? at the meeting on the 15th during the financial actions action section. And my number was 112223 for the record. Oh, you remember that. I just wanted to read. I wanted to get it written down by somebody. <laughs> <laughs> I think tonight, though, as we go through, we're working. People have, this is also time to talk about it. Yeah, definitely. 
I have some questions. You want to ask those questions now? Um, how many years did we do that for? Was it was just the assistant manager, or was it also when she was coordinated to enforcement officer? Yeah, so I want to say there was one or two years when it was ordinance enforcement officer, and then two years as the assistant township manager position on that, so for two years. Mm -hmm. But it was a lesser amount uh, beforehand. It was. It was $31,499 in 2018, $40,362 in 2019, $40,362 in 2020, and $40,362 in 2021. And that gets you to your... $112,223. And it was 50% of her salary? For the 2020 and 2021 budgets. It's not just the salary, it's the full cost of the Right. Thank you. I looked at the language, though, of the village that I think, Kim, you pulled it out and sent it. Yeah, I went to the ballot from the town clerk. And I understand that the principle of using the, you know, the millage funds for administrative costs. I understand that in principle, and it kind of makes sense. But I think paying one half of her salary over the past how it's you know, past several years, especially given the clear language of the of the millage that was presented to voters, specifically for East Precinct additional coverage, patrol coverage, I think using fifty percent excuse me, covering fifty percent of that restricted fund with her salary was really at best a stretch. So I'm gonna support especially when we've got nonstop community or consistent community concerns about speeding and also lack of patrol or wanting more patrol. I'm going to support the reallocation back to the, the police fund for that. I talked to Deputy um, Diapa briefly and especially with the clear language of that millage, he said he typically worked with her about an hour a week on East Precinct matters. So had 50% of her salary, it just, it's a bad look. I think for the board, and it puts the wrong taste in taxpayers' mouth. It just looks sloppy and just leads to the potential cynicism, I think, with the public. Anyone else want to? Ben, you said that it was your idea to put this on. So using these funds, did you know the were restricted, or did you know what the ballot language was when you came up with the idea? Or yeah, I know what the ballot language is. I I, I wrote it. <laughs> okay, well I mean, and you knew what it was. Okay, yeah. that's all I need to know. So I'm not I'm not. So the what the board, the public wants those funds to go to. You know, I, I'm not talking about that. From a a legal ability to use those funds, they they weren't illegally used. Um, but if the board feels that those funds are better used to provide additional, you know, police services or want, wants to set that back, I have, I have no problem with that at all. Thank you. And that's for the budget amendment, amendment process of the 15th. Yep. What are other municipalities? Uh, I mean, yeah, municipalities, it's all over the board. Um, but, you know, doing transfers like this is very, very common. In fact, we don't do nearly as many as some of the other communities that you know, the other community that I worked at, some of the other communities that I, I talked to. I mean, I've heard things that this one doesn't make me cringe. I mean, I've heard, so the city of Ann Arbor funds 50% of their police department through their utility fund because they can charge the University of Michigan water and sewer bills. They can't charge in taxes. So um, it is a, a tool that is used in other communities, um, but it's, it's, all, it's all over the board. So we do have other transfers that we uh, use as well. So um, we have a transfer from the Downtown Development Authority. Uh, they cover one half of the full cost of the Economic Development DBA Director and one full Buildings and Grounds employee. Uh, the Pathway Fund covers one full Buildings and Grounds employee. Um, and up until this past year, the library covered one and a half full Buildings and Grounds employees. Um, you know, we've been working on a process, a project to 
bring janitorial service back to the library. Uh, so we did that for a long time. We had a company that would come and, and clean the library uh, and our uh, crew didn't uh, do that. Uh, we went back the other way for the past uh, two years uh, and tried it through our own staff. Uh, and we would like to go back to a contractual service. We've been working with a, a Hope Network uh, that does this at a ton of other places as well. So we're uh, pretty excited about that. Once we get to the library section, I can explain a little bit more about how that, that contract would work. Uh, but again, all of these would be adjusted once final compensation is calculated. So right now the transfers are based on their 2021 compensation. And then once the 2022 full cost of compensation is figured out, uh, these would be adjusted up or down based on based on that. And I have a question. Yep. And I don't know all our inner workings of the township office here, but Sandra is a DDA uh, director, right? She's a DDA slash economic development director. Okay. I was wondering why her entire uh, salary should yeah. come from the DDA instead of having that each. Yep. So she has duties that are outside of the DDA. Uh -huh. um, that's a short answer. Fair answer. 50% of them? What's that? 50% of her duties are outside of the DDA? You know, so that's an interesting question uh, and something that I'm working on with our uh, interim HR director right now, too. So uh, one of the things that, you know, I think we don't do as well as we could is uh, because of the, the technology that we use right now is tracking where our employees actually work, right? So uh, BSNA, which is the suite of software that we use, um, has a time card module uh, that I've budgeted this year to, to bring in. So uh, <laughs> right now, all of these transfers are, are estimates, uh, and they can appear in the budget as an estimate, that's fine. Uh, but because of our lack, lack of technology the past couple of years, we just make that transfer, right? So what we're able to do if we use this new time card technology is when um, somebody from Billions of Grounds, you know, checks out at the end of the day, they can check, yep, I worked from eight until, you know, 1045 at the library, and then I worked at the DDA, and then I worked at the parks for the rest of the time. So we can actually see in real time and make those transfers per payroll uh, based on the time that they actually spend in there. So my hope is that when we, if it gets approved and we do that, you know, through the budget next year, you know, I have a better idea of what we can project in the budget for these transfers uh, but then the transfers will actually be based on the real time that these employees spend in these other areas rather than a, a best case, yes, based on historical performance. How much Perfect. is that extra for software for the additional capabilities? So typically with BSNA, it costs, well, if you're looking at implementation and training, uh, I budgeted $7,500 for that. Uh, and then the yearly maintenance cost is about $2,500. From my experience with programs like that, they're well worth it. Uh, in at t when I was there, we had to account for over an hour or a quarter of an hour, actually, on uh, this budget, that budget, or that department, or that department. And it, it was an eye opener. I think it's well worth it. And on the other hand, be careful what you ask for, because I did the same thing. Well, John, I worked for IBM. And it was an administrative nightmare trying to get every employee to every hour what you were doing. There was so much wasted time with people trying to report their time. And there was, I wouldn't call it BS, but people would just, they forget, so they just fudge stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, because, you know, your people out on the road, they're doing so much, so many activities. Now you're an hour here, two hours there, an hour and a half here. And it just became, it became, the data I thought was pretty fast. But anyhow, there's there's both sides. Yeah, I think you're right, Tom. Um, I think I'd rather see this kind of be a study of that professional management company come in and do a little study of our our operation. I think they could nail it down a little closer going forward. Well, yeah, but it changes seasonally too. Yeah, I understand. Yeah, I, I think we got a good good process. You, we have a pretty good feel, and we've kind of ballparked it. I mean, we're never going to get down. Um, Percentage, so I think you've done a great job. As far as I'm concerned, that's why we hired Ben to, to do this type of uh, daily management. So, regardless of whether we used it to talk about transfers or not, we need the time card software. I mean, we still, sure. guys are sitting down, filling out time cards by hand, they're spilling their coffee on it. Um, you know, it is <laughs> no, it's time for us to move into the, 
21st century with that time uh, software. You know, if we determine that we have issues and it doesn't work out, maybe we can look at some of those other mm -hmm. options as well. And this is a punch on the computer type thing. Correct. So, yeah. Are we going to have to fill it up? Oh, no. No, we don't have to. <laughs> and is this, is this totally separate from when we look at our um, IT needs and who we're using for that? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Question? Yeah. About the janitorial service at the library, do you just not have enough personnel for it or they just don't clean the toilets? Or? Yeah, so we're, we're down a buildings and grounds person right now. So the person that we had, so we had used the janitorial services up until 2000 and, and 2018. 2019, we decided, okay, we're going to uh, try to bring this in-house. Um, at that time, we had brought it in-house because it was getting, it was actually cheaper for us to bring it in-house than it was to continue to do it out of house. Um, so we've had mixed luck at best with being able to bring in employees specifically to, to do that work. Um, and then so we, when the person that was doing that work earlier in this year left, you know, we sat down with the buildings and crew staff again and, and uh, in HR and trying to figure out, okay, what's the best way to do this? Um, and I always think a lot of times you get your best ideas from boots on the ground. And one of the buildings and grounds guy in a previous life uh, had said that, you know, hey, I'm glad we had hired uh, Hope Network to do this work. So they um, bring in individuals with disabilities uh, as well as a supervisor. So you don't, um, you know, so there's somebody there to supervise them. Uh, he said they had amazing, you know, luck with this. So we looked into it. Um, you know, it ends up being way cheaper than if we had our own person to do it again. Um, it is, you know, a bit of a feel good service, uh, you know, being able to partner with that. Uh, they came with a whole host of references. They do it at the Gerald Art Ford Museum. They do a bunch of it at the airport. They do all these businesses. So uh, we really like to uh, uh, look at doing that this year. Where are we at in that process? So the proposed contract will be in front of the township board on that meeting. On the cool. And I got another question too regarding that. Uh, at one time, I don't know if we still have them, do we have a janitorial service that does the township office? No. So okay. I know there used to be, they came in and cleaned the trash cans and stuff. So the idea that we came up with uh, after talking with Jim was that we would start this service at the library. Mm -hmm. um, he thought he had enough capacity in his crew, even down one person, to be able to do the, uh, the minimal cleaning that goes on here. Of course, the fire station takes care of their own facilities. Our guys have always done the parks restrooms and that. So, and then after a year of using the Hope Network, if the board approves it, uh, we'll reevaluate whether we want them to do this building or not, too. Good job, Ben. I like Hope Network, too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yep. Buildings and grounds is sure been stepping up. Yeah, they do a really great job. Love those guys. Any other questions about revenues before we go on to? General fund expenditures. I am going to try to watch the clock just so that now any of those got plenty of information tonight. So next one is my favorite, very busy uh, graph. Uh, but this basically takes all of our general fund revenues and shows you uh, where those costs are going to. And the individual numbers to me aren't as important as the fact is that the pie looks you know, pretty even, right? We don't have a big chunk. We don't have 45 <laughs> or 50% of our um, our general fund revenues going to any service in between. So, you know, we've got small uh, departments like historical and cemetery. Uh, you know, we've got some larger departments, buildings and grounds, administrative uh, benefits for all the employees, um, ones that you would expect mm -hmm. to be there. So, um, you know, I, I, I more so use this graph to show, um, you know, the board and then the public that, yep, yeah, you know, we're, we're spreading the wealth among our, our general fund uh, departments when we're spending general fund dollars. So now we'll start going through each one of the departments. So the first one is our general fund uh, township board department. Uh, you can see pretty steady um, increases a little bit each year that we would typically expect. Mm -hmm. um, and looking at line items of note, there's nothing different in here this year than we really would have seen from previous years. The salaries from our, for our four trustees come out of this section. Uh, we have township dues, so we have a host of organizations that the township belongs to. A lot of them through the Grand Valley Metro Council, 
Uh, we belong to the Grand Rapids Chamber of Commerce, uh, primarily for our um, workers' comp insurance. Uh, we belong to a couple of smaller organizations as well, Best Aid, My Deal, uh, those kinds of organizations. Uh, and then just a reminder that we do budget money for uh, township uh, board members for education each year. So uh, supervisor, clerk, and treasurer have education uh, money uh, allocated in their budgets. Uh, but for uh, the trustees, there's money here. So if you guys see a, um, a conference that you want to go to or an opportunity you'd like to take advantage of, um, the money's there for you guys to be able to do that. I wanted to go this year, but they wanted masks and vaccination cards and all that stuff. So it'll be there for you next year, too, then. Yep. <laughs> Any questions about the Township Board Department? <clears throat> General comment. I think what we did in the past, we could call out individual salaries for the board officers as well as the department heads and the township manager. And I think that's transparency. People want to be able to see that. And we don't have that big of a staff. I think that's helpful. I've been told by two people that I was making just under $200,000 a year, which would be sweet, but it's going to be doing a lot better yeah. job, right? <laughs> I got my hopes up for a minute. A lot of people are saying, she's making how much? <laughs> but but it, I totally agree. I think that would, and it's quite an easy change. I think we don't have that big of a staff. So I guess the one thing that I would, so we used to, uh, before we had the system that we had now, we had line items for each one of the employees in the township. So each buildings and grounds person had a line item, each firefighter had a line item. So I think, you know, it is, you know, from that sense, pretty easy for us to, you know, the idea was, okay, we want elected officials and uh, executive department heads to have their own line item. That's easy to do. I, I push back a little bit on if you wanted, you know, individual firefighters or buildings and grounds people, mm -hmm. you know, they just don't. For the no, I don't They're just here that. to do a job, you know, that's that's a little bit of a, and again, all of our salaries are public information, so if somebody wants it, they can get it, but that's a little bit different than publishing a document that says, uh, the main policy of the document that says, hey, here's not only how much you make, but all of your, you know, your friends, how much they make as well. No, just for, um, so for board, it would just be trustees, as a, as a resident, I would initially think all them board members. They can say trustee for um they, they are in there, right? Huh? It says wages so part time. Wages part time. Trustee. Yeah. Trustee. <coughs> trustee. It doesn't say trustee, it says wages part time. I know it's right above that. It says township board. I know, and I'm saying that's four members of the board, and we have a seven member board. So the, rest the, the rest are, are under separate. supervisor clerks and yeah. chamber. And that's what we're getting to. Supervisor. Supervisor making $186,000. Yep. Except I'm not. So then it's an easy fix to say to just single out the department heads, including manager. You know, you could say an elect if you if you just out if you just take out the elected official and then the department head manager, that would do that would do it. You don't have to get into everybody. But I think it's an easy fix that would clear up a lot of confusion. For the clerk, treasurer, supervisor, and then you could say trustee because the board does not include the three elected officials. Officers. That'll reduce our public comments too, which is a win-win. There's that. And it may get your phone ringing a little bit more and mine a little yeah, bit quieter. There we so. go. All right. So moving on to the manager supervisor section. Uh, so Again, had this graph. 2020 was when the assistant township manager position was introduced. Um, and then, so it went up a little bit, and we had 2021, uh, and then actually down a little bit in 2022. Uh, and the reason for that is that I am, I already mentioned this once, I'm not anticipating uh, filling the assistant township manager position. Uh, instead, I would like to fill a position that I would title administrative services assistant. Um, so this would some, be somebody that would really be able to support uh, not only the manager and supervisor's office, but kind of all of the things that are going on in the administrative section of the building right now. Uh, in particular, I'd be using this person to uh, help me with the minutes for all the committees uh, between the 
the three board committees, uh, now the two ad hoc committees, the PFAS committee. Uh, I have a, quite a few committees that I'm responsible for doing minutes for right now. Uh, this person would help with mailings. This person would help with communications. Um, this person would help, uh, you know, could help Chrissy, you know, when we need passports to be done. Uh, you know, or in anything that she has of his, her role as the manager of administrative services. Um, so really kind of a boots on the ground assistant and not an assistant township manager that would have been a, a high level position. Now we've been at this, um, this administrative <coughs> services assistant. Would this be a lateral move of someone you may be considering from inside or is this an additional hire because it's more? This would be an lower. additional hire. Okay. So when it all, so, I talk a little bit about it right now, and um, as we go through the departments, it's called out for each one. But in this budget this year, I'm really um, at, uh, advocating for a net one increase to our staff. And this is the person that I would consider that net one increase to be able to uh, have that administrative support uh, handling. So uh, when we get to the buildings and grounds uh, uh, departments, uh, I am uh, advocating for the addition of a director of public works. Uh, that person would really be a uh, engineering uh, background, civil engineering background type person that would be handling things like parks and water sewer and pathways and project management, um, that, that kind of work. Um, that would really be, so we'd get rid of the assistant township manager and have that position instead. Um, and then in the uh, community development department, uh, I am recommending that we no longer have a community development director, that we go back to the planning director model, um, and then have a administr uh, uh, zoning administrator that would work under that person. So in some of the things that community development director uh, position did, like lead the buildings and grounds department, uh, maintain the um, uh, storm sewer program, uh, all of that work would fall onto that uh, director of director of public works. <coughs> you know, so it's a lot of reallocating of positions, uh, but when it's all said and done, there is that there would be that one position in the budget this year, Total? which is yeah, which is this is the one that I would anticipate. What about okay, but I just didn't. It sounds like two because you've got the the additional administrative services assistant mm -hmm. coming in, right? New hire. So that would that would be a new hire, yeah. Plus the higher of the oh, you're just replacing, so it's like still in that one. Oh, because you're not counting. You're replacing it, but you're calling it something different. Yeah. You're just calling it. You're renaming the position. Yeah. So the community development department used to have a community development director and a planner. Now it'll have a planning director and a zoning administrator. So it's two positions, two positions, but they've been realigned. Do we even call it at this point community development? No, it would go back to and in the budget is listed as planning department. And what about the lateral move for someone who, I'm trying to say without naming names, which is what you and I talked about. There's a need, correct? A so higher level need of maybe a certain. I would anticipate that this position would be filled by somebody already in the organization, and then that we would replace the position that that person vacates. Okay. There's definitely some needs right now, or so I'm not disagreeing with you. I'm just trying to. <coughs> As we get into these new employees and stuff, I'd like to see some engineering uh, come into this, so we can cut back on fish back. So that's the yeah, idea. Yeah, the director, of idea. Public, so director of public works would have a civil engineering background, so we can whack a million dollars of fish back out. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll never be I able. Yeah, we'll never be able to get to the point where we're doing a major water sewer project or something like that. Uh, there's always going to be times where we're going to have to, and it doesn't have to be fished back. We've had really good luck with Prine and Newhoff. There's plenty of other engineers out there, but we're never going to hire somebody specifically just to do civil engineering. Okay. But there are things that we use, we use contractors for right now uh, that we, we don't need to. So if we have an issue, like for instance, right now, we get a lot of storm water complaints right now. And right now, our storm water expert is our township engineer. And we send them out there and Fishbeck charges $175 an hour for that rate. That's the going rate. And 
That's just, it's not fish back. That's you go with Pine and Newhoff. That's the rate for an engineer, right? So if you have somebody on staff that has a civil engineering background and you just want to go out to check if the stormwater pond is working the way it's supposed to be working, even if we have a public works director that we have to bring in at a six figure salary. And I'll warn you right now that if we want a legitimate public works director with an engineering background, we're going to have to pay them accordingly well, um, because it's a tough market. But you're still, even with benefits, even if you add everything together, are paying that person probably $85 an hour to be on site rather than $175 if you send fish back out. Well, we have a community development back. director who had no engineering background who then would call the engineer, I mean, and we still didn't have anybody in house that was handling operations and management. We didn't even had that. Mm -hmm. I don't think we had it at the. And to me, that sounds like a great plan. Great plan. When do when do you anticipate that you would execute it? After we approve it. So if the board approves it on the fifteenth, um, you know, so probably the the first two positions that we will uh, put out there are the zoning administrator position. And the administrative services assistant. Uh, one because uh, I need to get Brian help in cool. the planning department. Sure. Uh, that department is no longer a one-person item, uh, and we'll post that one because I highly anticipate that we'll fill that with somebody internally, and then we'll have to turn around and post the position that okay. they're they leaving. So um, the cool. public works director one, um, we're going to have to put some thought into how we advertise that. Uh, we're going to have to do some targeted marketing. Um, we're going to have to put together some some better materials than just putting it out on the MML uh, job board and seeing uh, what, what what goes with it. Sure, uh, that's one that. Um, oh, we're still looking with in the first quarter of this next year. Definitely, yeah. I would expect all of the positions, whatever rearranging goes on, I would expect all of it to be completed by the end of the first quarter of 2000. This is one can that, in my opinion, should not be kicked down the road. It cannot be. Yeah. And I have two comments on it. One is that we have an in-house engineer that can go out and do these little uh, one street wonder developments. Uh, we can bill back to that developer as well, right? Not so only in some of his wages, so it takes our six day guy down to substantially less. So not only can we bill back to the developer, but again, you get into the, the transfer thing that we were talking about. You know, So we have a infrastructure revolving fund that has over $2 million in it right now. If their part of their project is doing, you know, if they're helping out on the water sewer extension project in 2022 and 2023, there's no reason why part of their time can't be built back to the infrastructure revolving fund. Is there? And then one more thing, when you were talking about building the grounds and having them report to this new person, I honestly think Jim McDonald is fully capable of running that department as a mm. department head. Well, let, let, let them make that yeah, decision. Yeah, I'll just you guys that, and I'm throwing it up. Because I don't think so. Based upon what Ben foresees the requirements and duties of this new guy to be, I don't think, with all respect to Jim, I don't think Jim's there, but that's for him to decide, not for me or you. I just wanted to throw it out there. Thank you. Although it was way out of here. What about, and I don't care how we label it, but traditionally, when I think of Department of Public Works, it's water, sewer, roads, that kind of stuff. And we don't do any of that as a township. And I, when I spoke to Mark Fitzpatrick, I think out of Ada one time, I was asking him, this is after Steve had left, community development director. And he said, um, he described it as an operations director. So someone who would be like project, you know, kind of the go-to for projects, that could, all the operations that we've got with an engineering background. Um, I don't want to mince words, but I'm just curious because we don't have some of those traditional services that you think of with public works or any of them really. So I get in my experience, public works has been all the things that were that we've been talking about. Engineering has typically been in a public works department, water, sewer, roads. And we do do those things, right? In the anticipation that this person would be, you know, a primary contact for the city of Grand Rapids for water and sewer stuff. They would be a primary contact with the road commission for road stuff. They would be a primary contact for the drain commission for, for stormwater stuff. We do a lot of our own stormwater stuff as well. Um, I guess I'm I'm less concerned about the title and more right. concerned about making sure the position is in the budget. I think there's time for us to, you know, if we don't like the, the title of the department of the director of public works, then you know we can massage that into a different title. 
Uh, I just want to make sure that the, the money for the position ends up in the budget so we can start that process. Can so, I suggest that we pass this down to the Personal Finance Committee to take a look at in detail? I don't, I don't think we have to micromanage that part. I think we should leave that up to them. And I, uh, you know, you don't have the salary in here or the job description yet. You've got to develop that, right? So the money for the position is in the budget. Okay. But yeah, so we would, all this stuff I'm talking about, like I do with any other position, um, you know, once the concept is done, we develop the job description, we develop the salary range, we assign it a pay grade, we do all that. And that comes to the personnel finance committee uh, and with an update to the um, organizational chart. Yeah. So uh, that would come that would come down that the pipe, pipeline. Right now, it just includes money in the budget for the, the position. But you won't have that necessarily done <coughs> before this fiscal year is up. You're going to work on that. You've we got the it. dollar in here, but you don't have the description, right? It'll be so the descriptions I'd say are probably half done right now and it won't take them long. And we discussed this at the personal finance committee and infrastructure or just one. It's been on the back burner for months. It's come months. up on a couple of different committees at a couple of different times. I think the sooner the better because the more from residents' perspective, we don't have somebody to <coughs> I mean everything right now is on your plate, mm -hmm. I think, and that's not fair to you and not effective. So I think it's great that A plus. Definitely. All right. What about the website and the um, like communications, IT, that kind of thing? Right now we've got Sabo, you know, Hunter from Sabo. He's in, but I keep getting questions from residents about, or it comes up with different issues. The website needs to be updated. The website can be better. This isn't on the website, and and things keep slipping through the cracks. I know there's certain maybe lower level employees that have been doing a really good job that we could stick. That are capable of handling website communication. Yeah, where's that? Am I jumping the gun? And I would, that would, those are things that I would assign to the administrative services assistant. But that is the new, this is the lateral, right? The new position, though. Correct. Okay. Yes. Yep. Good job. All right. <laughs> you feel like right now, though, you feel like right now, this stuff that we're talking about is a huge. Needed and helpful. From, from, from my perspective, besides the fire station number one project next year, the reorganization of the org chart and getting the employees into the organization is going to be the most important thing going forward. And I think personally, from what I've seen and heard from people and being on different committees at PFAS advisory, strategic plan, all that kind of stuff, we are getting pounded and there's a need for these exact positions that we just don't have. So the sooner the better. So, yeah, so the wages full time here includes the township manager and administrative services, and there's no problem breaking out. So it's probably what we'll do then is, you know, so right now all of the elected officials are in a wages part-time line item. We'll probably just create an elected officials line item for that. So it'll be trustees, supervisor line, clerk. So the numbers will be the same, the name will just change. And then for the departments that have employees in them, We'll create a line item that says, you know, department head or executive or whatnot, and that'll be separate from the full time and the part time. So, for example, in this fund, the supervisor's manager's fund, uh, we would have a, a township manager line item with the salary, and then we would just have a full time uh, salary one that would continue on there. Now, in this case, there's only one employee that would be in that. Um, but when you get into like the buildings and grounds, uh, there'd be two separate line items, one for the department head and one for the other full time employees that, that work in there. We would do the same thing. Building department, we do the same thing for the fire department, we do the same thing for community development department, the assessing department. So that would that would work out. That's not, not a problem. So we'll talk about it at the end of the presentation when we talk about wages too, but I have a line item in here for assignable salary. So when you look at the salaries, all of the CPI increases and step increases are currently included in the budget. Building department is a different animal, so we'll get to that when we get to their department. Uh, but we haven't assigned merit-based raises yet. So uh, we have two line items in the budget right now with assignable salary. One is here, it's 
$20,000. One is in the fire department, it's $25,000. Once those merit raises are allocated and approved by the personnel finance committee, those are zeroed out and then they appear in the other line items. So uh, each year we have a line item here that ends up being zero dollars in the final budget. Like we do for all of the departments that have employees, we have a uh, education line, uh, conferences and seminars for the township manager and supervisor, uh, and the special projects line item here is a continuation of the strategic plan update, uh, which will branch into 2022. Any questions here? Grace, anything you want to comment on? Being it's your department? I'll probably think of it later when we pass it. So yeah, and that's you know so really this is the, your guys' first opportunity to uh, you know look at this and digest it. Um, this is a live document between now and when the township board approves it. It's a live document. After that as well, you just have to go through a specific uh, process. So you guys leave here in the middle of the night. You wake up in a cold sweat, you know, realizing you forgot to ask me a question or don't like something that's in here. Just let me know and we can uh, make sure that that gets addressed before it comes back in front of the board. When do the merit-based raises you may typically get assigned? So they typically get assigned in the middle of December. It's going to take a little bit longer this year, so we get assigned uh, the first um, personnel finance committee meeting in January. And then we do retroactively pay those back until January 1. And what's missing is what? The reviews? So our policy says that uh, no uh, no merit-based raises will be given without a, a performance evaluation. So we got the clerk fund uh, again. You know the charts tend to be a little bit deceiving. Um, you know it looks like it goes up and down, but uh, really when you're you're talking about the the different amounts, there there isn't uh, that much different. Uh, 100 and just short of 107 thousand for fiscal year 2021. Uh, and then down a little bit for fiscal year 2022. Again, so uh, you have a full-time employee here, the manager of administrative services slash deputy clerk. Uh, the part-time wages are the clerk. We'll be able to relabel that to the elected official. Uh, and then we do have wages for casual help in the clerk's department as well. And that's budgeted at 20 hours per week. I didn't ask the question. <laughs> Correction. Yeah. Public service administrator. Is, is it's what you you've got listed as manager of administrative services, but that's very similar to what you were proposing on the previous slide. Yeah. All right. I just just to not I have copied confusion. it over. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, I'll make sure that it's correct. Public yeah. service administrator. Which, which, which is who's in the back of the room right now? Yeah. Is that what you is? You know, someday. Okay. <laughs> I mean, I'm confused and, enough. The salary and the deputy treasurer's salary is actually under bench control. Yes. Oh, yes. So did we make that new distinction? Yeah. Or well, I'm not really under you. Is it? No. So the oh, it's no, it's hundred and zero. Wages is based on on that. So I mean, we would um, those two positions could be moved out to the administration department. That's where I more than likely put them. That's where Liz. And Katie, losing KDR right now. I think that. So, but then that probably lends itself to Aaron as well because we do budget Aaron in the treasurer's department. Um, so historically, this is where those positions have been. Um, obviously, I have no problem moving them to different departments. Uh, we would just, uh, when we publish the, the budget, I uh, want to you know have an explanation as to why those why the clerk's department went down so much and why the you know, admin services department went up so much. And that casual administrative help, that's Jennifer. Correct. So what say we, do we want to move those positions? Do we want to leave them where they are? So I'm that's fine with me, it's up to you. And I mean, we should probably just thank the treasurer and clerk so that they're- For, for purposes of- the general tax administration fee, we probably ought to leave them where they are. It seems like it is all right where they are. I'm just raising that for Yeah. I'm just took my pills. <laughs> <laughs> how much time do we have left, Ken? Am I allowed yeah. to ask a question? I was just teasing saying how much time do we have left? 
Mr. B, you got a question? Am I allowed to ask one? Absolutely. You sure? <laughs> no, but go ahead. It's helpful. <laughs> So, so you already asked one question. So you should have asked, <laughs> if I allowed to ask two questions. And then you're done. You're all done. Okay. So back in March, you guys approved those positions that he's talking about and that one to be underneath him. So wouldn't that look better if they were under him? Because really, the deputy clerk doesn't have a pay. And you that go that specific, like there's a you know, I mean, like cemetery court session. has to approve you. Yeah, so, so uh, cemetery is still serving at the cemetery. will of the clerk and a right. for the will of the treasurer. So, for instance, like cemeteries is like the record keeping portion of cemeteries is something that she oversees. However, she also is supposed to oversee payroll, but she's, I mean, you don't see HR in who way. is. You are. I don't get that's some of your exactly. That's some of your statutory duties. Where is it? HR is in the administration, and that's you know that goes back to you know beneath. Where it? <coughs> I don't want to say it's inconsequential, but where these employees appear in the budget, they all eventually report to me anyway. So right. whether Chrissy's whether the budget for Chrissy's position appears in the clerk's department or the administrative department or being moved in the manager department. Her job description specifically says that she reports to me and that's how that reporting structure is. Okay, so do you do her clear. evaluations? So we do it the other. Yeah, so um, because the deputy clerk position reports to me. Even though well, she's not paid yeah. for that. Okay. Because if, if you have the responsibility of doing the evaluations for a person, yeah. You also have the responsibilities of giving, giving him an extra dollar for an attaboy yeah. or withholding. <coughs> and yeah. she doesn't have a responsibility for an extra dollar. Correct. Correct. What's that? And you don't have the, you can't give me a dollar. Exactly. So you want to be placed where you're most likely to get dollars. Well, it's only you know, I'm yeah. just one, I'm a rule type of gal. I'm just trying to get, I would. She, she should be in the same place where your evaluation is where your dollars go. But what were you just saying about tax? Yeah, we're saying that it seems better to leave it the way it is. We, we get a tax administration fee of 1% of the collections oh. each year, and we have to justify that. Oh, for the treasury. So we can put the entire tax department or treasury department in that computation, assessment oh. department, um, part of the overhead. We have a number of categories that we use to, to justify it. Yeah. <clears throat> So it's easier to justify if it's called out in the individual departments. Good point. Mm -hmm. Move on. Next. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Treasurer's department, again, uh, real nice uh, flat uh, graph here, uh, up a little bit in 2022, $153,000. Uh, so we have two full time positions here. I didn't call out Oksana's second uh, title. Uh, did we do <coughs> Network Treasury Services? Is that what we landed on? We should update that in the presentation. <coughs> uh, we also have our account clerk two position, uh, which is Aaron's position. Um, so the wages part-time, again, we can update the name of that is the treasurer. Uh, we do have a casual line item in here where we have a pet selections column and we have some extra people uh, counting in and handing us checks. Uh, we uh, have a couple extra people helping them at the front desk. Um, and then there's, as we go through each one of the departments, you'll see this office equipment uh, line item uh, and it fluctuates up and down each year, usually primarily just based on whether or not we pay for computer replacements. Uh, so we do replace our computers every uh, four years here. Uh, so sometimes it looks a, a lot, lot more. Uh, and this is a year where they have three uh, computers scheduled for replacement. Uh, otherwise, this line item typically just has $1,000 per person that's in that department. So if they need to get a bookshelf or a filing cabinet or something like that, there's money available for them to, to do that. Any questions about the treasurer's departments? 
All right, moving on to assessor. Uh, so I had a bit of a jump up in fiscal year 2021. Uh, and looking to increase a little bit more in 2022. Uh, so we have three full-time employees uh, here in the assessing department. So we have our manager of assessment services, our deputy assessor, and our residential appraiser. Um, and this manager of assessing services uh, is, the creation of that position is tied back uh, to this contract, uh, contract level four assessor as well. And you guys will remember uh, a couple months ago, we went through that process. Uh, so we have uh, our contract assessor back in. Things are working great. Uh, Jennifer is plugging along, hopefully to get her level four assessment license uh, before the end of the year. Uh, and then uh, that will eventually go away uh, and there'll be some type of monetary uh, award for the manager of assessing services becoming the assessor. Uh, she'll get a little bit more money and we'll save a little bit and uh, all will be good within the world. And that would be Jennifer. Then. That would be Jennifer. Yeah. Okay. Makes good sense. Uh, so we do have a casual employee in this department as well. Uh, really helps out with data entry. Um, uh, that person is actually on maternity leave right now, um, but she does a great job. That's what that jump work was from 2020 to 2021, where we just needed somebody kind of sit in front of the computer and take the you know 5,000 surveys that we get in from people and plug them in and she does a great job. And the nice thing about uh, that is that she's actually showed an aptitude and an interest in assessing as well. So, you know, we wanted somebody that might be able to help us in the future in that department. Uh, so she went and got her level two assessing certification this past year. Uh, we were real proud of her. And uh, I think she's going to do some family stuff for a while, but has shown some interest in potentially getting that level three uh, license eventually. So, uh, we've been real happy uh, with her. And again, just like Ken was talking about in the treasurer's department, uh, the funding of the assessing department is something that we uh, consider when we do have that uh, that fee. Uh, you know, a lot of times you get questions from our residents on why do you charge the 1% administrative fee? And the reason behind that is that we are responsible for the assessing, the tax collections, the defense of our assessing, our assessing numbers, for all of the tax and jurisdictions uh, in Cascade, not just uh, the, the township. So instead of the schools paying us to do their assessing work and the community college paying us to do their assessing work, um, the legislature instead just says that if you need money to do that, you can charge this 1% fee. So when we, the justification that Ken was talking about that, we include things like our assessing department and the treasury department and those, uh, so, and then there is a, a bump up in service contracts. So one of the things Jen came to ask me this year is if we could uh, purchase a subscription to CoStar, um, which is essentially a, Tim could actually probably explain it better than, than I could, um, but a lot of times we have to uh, figure out what our properties in the township are worth compared to other properties, you know, banks compared to banks, hotels compared to hotels. Uh, so when we get getting ready for people challenging their tax uh, assessments and tax tribunal cases, we have that. So um, Jennifer's indicated that it's a tool that's been lacking in the department, uh, and that deficiency really showed up this past year when we started getting hammered uh, with uh, tax tribunal cases for our hotels and whatnot. So uh, it's about a $5,400 a year uh, subscription. Uh, Jennifer said she'd like to get it this year, evaluate whether it was worthwhile, and then uh, Come back and decide if we can do it uh, next year or not. So, that is the budget. how many? This is a little off the topic, but how many empty big box buildings do we have right now? I don't think we have any empty big box buildings. You remember that lawsuit up in the UP that we opened more cheddar es Escanaba, was it? Yeah, Escanaba. Yeah, we were looking at that to see what would happen on assessing. So the, the, the problem with that isn't necessarily us having empty big box buildings. The problem is that is that when we get these tax tribunal cases, when we get a Meyer or a Walmart or a uh, Costco <coughs> challenging their tax assessment, they're using the values of other empty big box buildings in other communities to try to challenge their assessment here. Is that working? So the case is still ongoing. The one in Escanaba? Yeah. 
but absent okay. of a, um, a beneficial end to that, uh, yes, that is working. Our big box stores in Cascade are undervalued based on the uh, based on the big uh, the empty big box theory. Undervalued? Yes. So they should have no complaints. Exactly. No. Yeah. Exactly. And and they would ex you would expect it to be the opposite. No. So we would. So we would we would never we would never overvalue anything. <laughs> so we want it to be at value, right? So we would expect the value of our buyers, our WalMarts, our Target to be higher based on the best uh, uh, best and highest uses of those facilities. So what places like Meyer are saying, they're saying, well, you're valuing our I, sh I shouldn't use Meyer because they're actually a good partner. We use Walmart. <laughs> so. Uh, Walmart is saying you're valuing our building at $55 a square foot, but there is a Walmart, an empty Walmart in uh, Detroit uh, that is only worth $13 a, a square foot. Now, the reason it's only worth $13 a square foot is because is in a really bad part of town, there's a deed restriction on it that says you can't use it because when Target moved out of it, they didn't want to sell it to a competitor. But what Walmart is saying is, well, since that one is $13 a square foot, you should settle for our building for thirteen dollars a square foot. And what ends up happening, because the state tax tribunal has sort of bought into it, is that we end up settling on okay, we'll say yours is worth thirty-five dollars a square foot. So now the Walmart in Cascade is undervalued at thirty-five dollars a square foot, and the best and highest use says that it should be valued at fifty-five dollars a square foot. Yeah, we're not collecting the taxes that we should. Correct. That's what I meant. Yeah. Yeah. Fun times. <laughs> well, at the same time, we want to encourage development and yes, our yeah. 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 You know who? You know who else is using that tactic? Who? Banks. <laughs> ah, <laughs> probably appraisers. Yeah. 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 A few different ways to increase value. Yeah. Yep. Revenue. All right, moving on to elections. Uh, so we have this uh, chart that follows uh, primary and then down to um, off year and then general and then down to primary uh, and then uh, or down to off year and then up to primary again. So we're in a primary year and we've budgeted for two elections this year. Uh, so I think we're pretty sure we won't have a local election, right? We'll just You're talking have, about 22? Yeah, we'll just have the primary and the general. I hope so. <laughs> so um this position might be double budgeted it is. we're gonna have to look that back and take a look at that because we have this in the clerk's department as well um so right. yep i just realized that of course the clerk's department uh -huh. good catch mm -hmm. And our election is a statutory duty of the clerk. Sorry, election would it be boiled on a basic statutory duty to the clerk? Yeah. yeah. Uh, so we have the election specialist in here, um, and this is probably the appropriate place for it. So uh, we'd we'll probably eliminate that out of the clerk's line and, and keep it here. Mm -hmm. um, so we have our election day workers for two elections. Uh, and Jennifer, our election specialist, did a great job of detailing how many people we need at each precinct and how much we pay them and all of that. So um, the, the budget that we have is based on full staffing for all of our precincts uh, and our absentee counting boards as well. So uh, it's a pretty significant dollar. Um, and then one of the um, uh, things that came out of the essentially no reason absentee uh, ballots is that we need to actually have people on staff to process absentee ballots on a daily basis for six uh, weeks. For six yeah. weeks once they come rolling in. So yeah. they get trained and we have a couple people that sit down in desks and all they do is process those absentee ballots. Uh, so those are included in these casual wages as well. Uh, so other than that, uh, this department just includes staffing and supplies for two elections, the primary <laughs> and general. Uh, and as I mentioned, the primary election is reimbursable by the state. So uh, we've, in the revenue section, we included uh, $25,000 as that, as that, as that uh, being covered. 
Um, that's conservative. Uh, <laughs> probably when it's all said and done, we'll probably be able to get closer to thirty, thirty-five thousand dollars. But I'd rather uh, under budget that revenue than over budget it. Any questions about elections? Buildings and grounds. Uh, so you can see this stack up here. Uh, this is, I already talked about this a little bit. So this is, we're seeing a bit of an increase here because this is where I plugged in that uh, director of public works or whatever we end up talking about it. Uh, and since we uh, talked about that ad nauseum, I won't go all over it again, but the director of public works would be a new position responsible for the buildings and grounds administration. So again, Jim would still continue to run the day-to-day -day operations of the buildings and grounds department as the um, uh, working supervisor, but this person would be responsible for the administration. Uh, parks, pathways, stormwater, water sewer, streets, engineering, and project management. And as I mentioned, there's a possible for transfer of funding from other areas of responsibility. So if we do find out that this person is spending you know, a significant amount of time during a certain period working on water sewer stuff, we'd be able to budget a transfer out of the IRF fund into the general fund to help cover uh, part of that cost. Uh, and then there's six full-time buildings and grounds employees in this department. Again, we talked about the transfers, one's fully funded by the DDA, one's fully funded by the Pathways, um, and uh, uh, 0.75 is funded by the library fund. And then we have wages casual as well. So we have four seasonal employees in this department. Uh, there's two long-term seasonals, April to October. There's two traditional seasonals, seasonals May to August. Uh, we have these, these positions budgeted at $15 an hour now. Uh, it's hard to find a position around that pays less than $15 an hour. We're just going to have to, uh, to pay that. Um, we're hoping this year we'll have a little bit more success finding people to apply for these positions. Um, and myself and Jim and Katie have already talked about uh, better ways to advertise for these positions to make sure that we uh, get them in. I mean, do you think 15 is good? Sounds like 15. So this is way harder work. They are working Digging online. and hauling and moving plants. And Get to be outside though. <laughs> so I, I did ask around. I asked around to Plainfield Township, Ada Township, Gaines Township, Kentwood, Walker. Everybody was in the thirteen to fifteen dollar okay. range. So I just want to be what other people are paying as well. So um, and then this is really where all of the maintenance expenses for our township hall, buildings, grounds, facilities, uh, and equipment is, is budgeted in here. Um, so you see a lot of utility line items, uh, general maintenance line items, and so on, and uh, vehicle maintenance, uh, fuel, uh, all of that. Um, so, but the big change for this this year is the addition of that uh, director of public works position. And it is, so there is one less buildings and grounds employee in here as well, because we there was a buildings and grounds, a janitorial position budgeted last year that we took out of the budget and then at the same time took the transfer out that was coming from the library because that would now be work done uh, by contract. And who handles the township hall? So the plan is for this year for the buildings and ground staff to do that. Uh, that was their idea, it wasn't my idea. So, um, but I think it's a, it's a good one. They want, to, they want to make sure that the contract with the Hope Network is successful. Um, and then we'll have an evaluation probably the beginning of uh, fourth quarter uh, 2022 to determine if we should add this building to that contract. Um, and the person we've been working with uh, at Hope Network has said, you really only need to give me 24 hours notice and I can add Township Hall. So if it gets to the point where we want to do it earlier, we could we could do that mid-year as well. Okay, what's the communication cost? <clears throat> what is it? Uh, phones and internet? Because of the buildings and grounds. So you have our electricity here, you have our heating here, all of the maintenance costs for all of our facility items come out of come out of this. Not IT there, it's not commuters. No, so the IT stuff comes out of um, the administrative department, administration department. Uh, so cemetery, um, back uh, a while ago, we were spending a lot of money in the cemetery to expand the uh, 30th Street Cemetery, that project is done now, so it's all uh, basic expenses again. Um, 
you know, so there's some general maintenance items out of here. Uh, the one I always get questions about is backhoe services. So when we decided to start digging our own graves uh, back in uh, 2008, 2009, uh, we had two options. We could either buy a piece of equipment for $25,000 that allowed us to um, dig graves 95% of the time. Uh, and then um, the only thing we kind of wouldn't be able to dig then is when there was a hard frost in the ground. Or we could have spent $150,000 on a piece of equipment that would allow us to, um, to do it all the time. So the decision we made was to buy the less expensive piece of equipment and we keep this money in here so we can bring in company, uh, I think they're called Dirt Cheap. Um, <laughs> but uh, if we have a burial in February and our equipment just can't handle it, we have a little bit of funds to be able to do that. <coughs> yeah. I haven't spent it in about five years though, so it's really just an insurance fund for us. Any questions about the cemetery? All right, so administrative. Uh, looks like the budget just to go down slightly for next year. Um, so a whole bunch of stuff budgeted in here. Uh, again, uh, one of the changes that I'm proposing for the budget, not necessarily a position change, but right now, the way our human resources scenario was set up was that the assistant township manager was doing some of the high level human resources stuff and then we had a human resources generalist. Uh, we've had Katie in for about a year and a half now. She's been absolutely outstanding. She has the skill set and the education necessarily to be an HR director. Uh, so uh, I would just take the HR uh, duties that were vested in that assistant township manager and just create the HR director position course, it would come with a little bit of a raise for her as well, um, basically a, a bump in position grade. Uh, and then we have our senior accountant that is here as well, uh, that's Liz, she has a bang up job. Uh, we have our two front desk clerks, uh, those are part-time positions, uh, that also has worked out extremely well for us uh, because we have full coverage, uh, so the times where we've had a full-time person at the front desk, uh, there's issues when that person is on vacation or they're sick or they're taking lunch. Uh, this way, with the two part-time people, uh, you know, there's full coverage during the day, and when there's illness or vacation, the other person is always, 95% of the time, able to come in and help cover. Uh, besides the fact that the two ladies that fill those positions are just phenomenal. So uh, we're really happy with the way the part-time front desk clerk is going right now. Big item in here is our insect and weed control. Um, so our acreage to spray has been steady over the past few years, which has been really nice. Uh, you'll remember about three years ago, we were up to, four years ago, we were up to around 1,800, 1,900 acres, uh, and that's come way down to kind of our, our standard spray. Typically by this time of year, I have the report back from our consultants, uh, and I just haven't gotten that back yet, so I can't say for certain uh, that we won't need to make an adjustment here, but I would also think that uh, if there was a huge issue, he already would have contacted me and, and let me know. So I'm fairly confident that the $50,000 that we uh, kind of allocate for spraying will uh, be able to uh, cover that for next year. So we talked about it during the last budget amendment. So uh, we've had a, a ton spent on legal fees. It's kind of been that peak year because of the um, uh, SADs that we went through and um, all of the tax tribunal cases that we have, uh, have, have had to have. Um, I really think that this year is kind of the peak year for our, our legal fees. Um, I'm not going all the way down to what we used to budget before. So we used to budget uh, $35,000 to $40,000 and just as necessary. I've budgeted $75,000 for next year, which I think will give us a good cushion as we, it allows us to continue to use the legal services as we need. Um, but I don't think it will be as high as we end up spending this past year. Uh, so we have a special projects line item here that is our communications consultant and the expenses associated with that. Uh, we currently use Sabo PR. Um, they do have a proposed fee increase for next year. So personal finance committee will have to review that, uh, figure out what they want to, to do. Um, but we uh, uh, continue to, to use them. Uh, this is where uh, those uh, fees are in. And then there's a ton of stuff in here that are just general expenses of the township. So we had maintenance expenses of the township and building the grounds. These are just general expenses. So 
you know, engineering work that uh, really doesn't fall into any of the other categories uh, comes in here. A lot of that is reimbursable because the engineers are reviewing site plans for the, um, uh, the planning commission, uh, so on and, and so forth. Uh, costs for our website, um, postage, office supplies, uh, all of our special programming. So, you know, we have 4th of July. Uh, we uh, assist with uh, community programs for KDL sometimes. Uh, we have our Halloween, our citizens, senior citizens program. All of that uh, is in here as well. Question on the stable. All the time, I keep seeing just special projects, special projects, and it's you know, five, six thousand dollars. I have no idea what special project that is. I'd like to have a little more clarification on that, I guess. So, special projects is just a line item where that, you know, so where line item where that cost was, was put when we brought them in. Um, you know, if we wanted to change the name of that, that line item. <clears throat> I have no problem. We're, we're going to be about seventy-five, eighty thousand dollars in special projects. Mm -hmm. I'd like a little more information. I think more breakdown on like, and I know this is kind of we're working on it. <laughs> website cost and who's responsible, communications, that kind of stuff. Because now Hunter from Saber, and he does a great job. But he's doing a lot of stuff that in theory should be inter could be internal, pretty basic stuff, website. And I don't, there seems to be a need, but I don't, yeah. it's not clear based on that. I think we need so to. So now is probably not the right time to do that because I am asking Hunter to do stuff that normally I wouldn't ask him to do. Once that administrative services person is in to kind of help with that stuff, um, that would probably then be uh, the breakdown. But the, you know, the way it had worked before is that. Hunter would be responsible for developing the content, the graphics, you know, the language, all of that. But then we would be using our internal staff to actually post those things on, on Facebook and respond to messages when we need to and, and do all of that. So I can certainly work on that. Again, just right now probably isn't the best time to get a clear picture of how those duties are divided. It keeps coming up because I was told by people outside the township, like, I was under the impression that they weren't allowed, that they hadn't yet gotten involved in <laughs> of the township website, maintenance, design, that, anything then that was kind of internal. So yeah, so, so was, Sable hasn't been involved in the website design at all. So there was a, a private company that we <coughs> that designed back in the day. Four additions and modifications. I would think Hunt, this is right up under mm -hmm. now, and we've got them here. And <laughs> this is not getting done. I, I would think that would be appropriate at this time. Is that what Sandra is Sandra doing that? So Sandra has access to the website, yeah. Chrissy <coughs> has a little bit of access, you know, she... I will hide that. Go for it, Chrissy. I mean, we need it because it's not I just happening. mainly like change my stuff. Well, every now and then I look at it, too, because I catch things that are out of date, and then I just, she'll make the change. Mm -hmm. And I don't... How many hits are we getting on, like, Facebook and Twitter and all, and all these different social media sites? How, how, how much bang for a buck are we getting? I can't tell you right now. <laughs> you know, so we, we have you know, we have access to all those metrics, um, yeah. uh, especially. So a lot of times we will, um, you know, we'll have something going on, like when we had uh, the Parks and Rec survey out there. Uh, you pay a little bit extra, so it's on Facebook. So it's not just your people that are following your page that are getting that, but it's getting in front of people. You know, so it'll use, you know, it'll ping them to figure out where they are, so you get people that. Don't like your page that are still seeing those advertisements. Uh, we get there's all sorts of metrics to come back on that, but I haven't asked Hunter for any of that lately. I just don't want to spend 40 grand for eight people. Yeah, yep, no, I'm sorry. The thought. A question for you, Ben. Yep. Going down the road, not necessarily to the date tonight, would the town should be smarter off having an internal PR person? Eventually, yes. And I, I could see where it would be yeah. more economical and perhaps better control of the person. Yep. We brought all it in things, initially for like damage control, right? Or so all things being equal, I probably would have recommended that this year. Um, I just had my eggs in some other staffing baskets. And because Sabo was doing such a good job, you know, my idea is, okay, I can deal with the other <laughs> parts. Um, 
and then revisit this again, you know, coming up probably uh, 2020. Yeah, if, if, need be. Yeah. if we need to have a 13 egg vest before you don't hesitate. <laughs> yeah, as you know, I, I put a shot over the bow. Yeah. And I'm watching the response. Yeah. And we, if we've got them here and our website needs help, let's use yeah. them. Okay, we could them use we could use Hunter for 40 hours a week right now if if, if we if we needed to. Well that's um, up to you. Yeah. Um, Which shows so that our staff needs to be tweaked. Okay. Where's okay, the economic number. development department in this? What's that? Oh, I just didn't see the economic development department. So there isn't an economic development department. Sanders' wages are in the planning department right now. That's where they've always been. But is it misleading to call it an economic department or development department? We don't have an economic. I'm sorry, can you, what did she call her? Community development? Economic development. DDA slash economic development director. Oh, I thought I've been described. I thought it's been described to me as economic development department. No, just a director mm -hmm. of economic development. Okay. And that comes where? So it's included in the planning department right now. Page six. Drain maintenance. So, um, you know, we don't have a lot of uh, drain expenditures uh, right now. So we've uh, for 2022 budgeted uh, thirty thousand know, four hundred dollars here. Um, that's primarily two things. Uh, so the Thornhill Hills drain. Uh, we still clearing out the weir baskets down there one to two times a year. Uh, so this is where the cost for that comes out of. And then just like any other. Um, Entity in the township, we're subject to Kent County Drain Commission special assessments as well. Um, so there's typically when you have a Kent County Drain assessment, 20% of the assessment uh, comes back to the, the locals. So it's not a huge chunk of change, but we make sure that we have the dollars in there. So when there's a uh, assessment um, for drain maintenance, it can come out of here. And then a line item for drain engineering: uh, continue with our stormwater master plan project meetings. Uh, so when we develop that stormwater master plan, there's a whole host of areas where we could possibly use uh, stormwater improvements. Uh, and this is an opportunity to uh, look at those areas kind of on a case-by-case -case basis. So next year, I think we're going to look at the Tamaran area. In the, uh, in the uh, graph in 2019, they have a big chunk. Was that Larry Lake in 2019 that we handled? Uh, I think that was probably the end of Schoolhouse Creek. Oh, okay. All right. Thanks, Ben. <clears throat> Who paid for the larger uh, water to Thornapple? The larger the water supply, they went through and where we connected before because of the uh, arsenic, they doubled that size of that line. Did we pay for that? No idea. That was way before my time. No, no, it's just the summer. Mm -hmm. I don't remember that. No, you know, it, it went right across the street from me, right between the two houses. We did start up the school. Did they pay oh, for it? Elementary. I'm not sure. They dug up, they dug all the trees, just made a mess oh, of that. They put that up. would have been a private connection. So if the school was, if the school needed a larger connection to their building, they would have been fire suppression. Yeah. So they paid for it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. There were there weren't any public projects. Okay. So now when that when that water main first went in, if it was oversized, either the township or the city of Grand Rapids would have paid for that oversizing. But we just do that for the public infrastructure. We wouldn't pay anything for private connection. I don't think it was oversized. We just had to put it down. So roads, you can see we spent a, a bunch of money on roads in 1819. Uh, dipped down a little bit in 2020 when we were a bit unsure as to what COVID would do with our funds. Uh, and then we dipped back up in 2021 as we finished a bunch of areas as well. So right now, we can do any, every year. Uh, we have a, the standard program uh, for the Kent County Road Commission, uh, which is the $400,000, which is, gets us $800,000 worth of work. 
We started talking about that at the infrastructure committee meeting this week, and we'll be looking at some uh, potential projects. Um, really, I could see us, let's say, take a break. Uh, obviously, we're still going to do some roads, but taking a break this year from those large expenditures. And at the end of the PFAS water extension project in 2023, going back and finishing those roads in there as well, because that's really the, um, if you look at our PASER map, when I get the updated one, I'll send it to everybody because it's really pretty. It's almost all green. There's this little blob of red and yellow and orange in the middle of it, and it's that neighborhood, but we don't want to spend a lot of money on the roads right now when we know they're going to have to tear them up for the merger the corridor. The merger corridor. Yep. Uh, ben, the Cascade Road Corridor Safety Study, that was we started that last year. So it was in the budget last year, and we haven't gotten to it yet. So I'm just carrying that cost over to 2022 okay. to be able to do that. Um, and then we've also had uh, a group of residents from uh, Snow Road uh, ask us about the possibility of paving their road. Again. Um, so no, this is a this is a different one. Okay. Snow between 52nd and 60th. Well, where where did they increase the speed limit? That time we asked them asked them to look at decreasing it. It was on Cherry, I believe. Cherry Valley. Yeah, that was yeah. Cherry Valley. Yeah. Because when we came back and said that we'd be removing trees and widening the road, they said, eh. "Well, they so on Cherry Valley, they they asked us to lower the speed limit, and so this is my before my time, so I'm getting this secondhand, but." What happens when you have a, a speed limit request is that basically the state police goes out there and they do a speed survey and the speed limit is set at whatever it is 85 the 85th percentile of how fast people are traveling out there. And instead of lowering it, they raise the speed limit because people are going faster. So that is a cautionary tale that we always tell people is that we don't have the ability to set speed limits. We'll ask them to do it if you want them to, but you're gonna to have to live with the, the consequences. So you said the same thing to the village. Yeah. yeah. Do we get a heads up when they're doing that? They won't do one without us ordering yeah. it. So we would have to so tell ask them that we want them to do sometimes uh, yeah. it's right. And I can foresee that Cascade Road <laughs> process this year is gonna solve the same thing down the road. Yeah. Yeah. Could we time it so that we also have a patrol car in certain areas? I don't know. Like <laughs> Put up a big sign that says, if you want the speed limit lower, just drive slow through this area. Right. And we'll all we'll be out there doing loops, driving Character 15 miles an hour. Right here. <laughs> so, but for snow, so, you know, they, they're interested in having their road paved. Uh, so eventually they'll have to, you know, have the petition, the board would, you know, consider that petition. But what happens for these reconstruction projects is the first step is that the board has to order engineering from the road commission. So uh, basically what they do is they go out, they take a survey, um, they mark what trees are gonna have to come down, what the limits would be, um, and then put together a cost estimate. So the township has to front the money for that, that engineering. Um, so I've got that money in here only if it gets to the point where uh, the board decides that we have to do the pre-engineering for the, the snow project. We did a similar thing with Quiggle a couple of years ago. That's the one I was thinking. They didn't want it. Right? Well, it's still coming around. So we met with uh, uh, the petitioner a couple of weeks ago, provided him some more information. He's going back to his neighbors to figure out if they're still interested in that. So. Because they like the trees. Yep, everybody likes trees. For these costs, um, is this something we just write directly, pay directly to the road commission? Do we have to do any of our own engineering costs or anything? No, we just, it's directly to the road commission. Okay. And they tell us that they write the work order for $25,000. When we did Quiggle, it came to $6,000 and change. So basically they do the minimum that's required just to be able to survey the scope of the project and give us a, a legitimate cost estimate. So they're pretty, they're pretty good about it. And they do it all internally. So they don't, uh, they don't push it out to a private engineering firm. Is that the, um, this might be a little off topic, but that um, part of Cascade Road that they want to widen, that they're having a meeting about on Wednesday evening, is that done, decided? No, no. So this is the point where they have enough of it done where people can come and take a look at the, uh, the project and give comments and all of that. 
Uh, they'll take all of that back to as staff, they'll kind of do what they do. Eventually, the Kent County Road Commission has an actual public hearing. So this one is just an informational meeting. They'll have an actual public hearing where everybody will be notified, be able to come and give whatever testimony they want. And only after then can the road commissioners decide whether or not the project goes forward. And I'm not sure where this would go, but um, <coughs> when we've got some major Sorry. vendors, <laughs> make some major vendors that we work with a lot and have pretty hefty fees or paying or providing pretty big services. So I'm thinking right now, like um, Sabo, the different law firms, their special counsel, you know, for the PFAS, general counsel, um, engineering. It, it would be helpful for me, and I think maybe some people in the public, if we had a sheet that just kind of said a little more detail, because we don't have so many of those, but it it might be a little clearer. I would like to see it. Like, I don't know how much we pay for engineering services average per year, and I know there's different ways to present it. Same with lawyer fees, that kind of stable communication, but it would be helpful to have some of those main vendors kind of specified. And they can be sprinkled throughout the budget wherever their services are, but I'm kind of looking and trying to figure out and see if it's confusing. So that might be easier as like a year end report or a, you know, a quarterly okay. report is rather than you know something that would appear in the budget. It'd be hard to do in the budget because you know there's fish back invoices that end up in you know six or seven different spots. Um, but if the board was interested in a regular report that kind of you know detailed that, I mean that'd be something that we could put together and include in the you know, the financials that come out every year. That would be helpful. Maybe a summary mm -hmm. um, and a little bit of information would go a really long way. I think it maybe giving some you know, clarification. Why don't you hire all those two people to help you? Can we do the quarterly? Well, no, put the put it on the uh, the vendors. Charge, we're paying good money. How much have yeah. you, you know, what have you collected? What it, just give us a brief to report. What project? We need to know more than what's a special project. I don't have a problem with them doing it at this point, but you know. Yeah, where you're at in the project. Yep. Budget. Yeah, and then Liz or whoever can quickly verify that it's accurate based on our book, put the burden on them to give us the report, especially because at the board level, we're the ones paying this, and at the community level, they're looking at us for being on the hook, you know, responsible. So our, our accounting software generates reports like that. So all those would have to do is click, you know, Provide me a report of every invoice from Fishback from January 1 through March 31st. It would have the invoice, it would have already have the, the name, it would have where it was budgeted, it would have how much it, what amount it was. Uh, we could work on getting a little bit more detail in there, um, but we're able to generate those directly out of our accounting software. You're right. I don't want to add too much more, but it would be very helpful. And this year, we're already coming to the end of the year, but so it wouldn't necessarily have to be done this year, you know, the conclusion, but early winter. Early 2022, just to give us the an update. And I don't know, do we have a contract with Fishback? Well, how do we, you know, we call them township engineer, but what's the legal, what relationship do we have with them? Yeah, so uh, uh, there's there was a contract approved back in the day, you know, but it's basically ongoing, right? So it's not, it wasn't a, uh, yep, you're going to be an engineer from X time to Y time. It's really similar to what we have with. Uh, um, Foster Swift right now. It's basically like, yep, we're serving as your township attorney. And if you don't want us to be our township attorney, you give us, you know, 30 days notice and then we're not your township attorney. Uh -huh. Yeah, I'd like a little, just a little background information. All right. So our yard waste program, uh, this is uh, pretty similar every year. Uh, so we have our spring and fall cleanup. Uh, those are the two uh, big ones we, weekends we have where you can come and, and do stuff. We don't know if we're gonna, so we didn't do it in conjunction with Ada this past year. Uh, we're gonna re-meet with them to see if there's an opportunity to do it with them in conjunction with them next year. Part of the problem is that the school no longer wants us to use their facility. Um, I'm not sure if that was COVID related or if that is uh, just policy related now. Uh, the spot that we used to do it at the old Road Commission building on Bay Street uh, has been sold and being developed. So it's kind of hard for us to find a spot Mm -hmm. uh, that would support all of uh, people from both communities coming. It was a little bit centrally located. So you know, this fall we did it at uh, Ada Bible Church and they were a good partner. Um, we talked about moving the uh, uh, yard waste town to the Breck Park Fisher because of the construction that was going on. Yeah. 
would that be too far out of the central location for us to propose what they so I so the, the I don't think it would be too far out of the central location. The problem again would be traffic flow, right? So when, out of when there. you're combining yeah. the residents from both places, I mean there's just the one road that goes in and out. You're taking up the whole parking lots. Typically on a Saturday, you got you know soccer going, and it's just a matter of finding a place that works from a traffic flow sure. perspective. Understood. Well. That's why eight of us go. Mm -hmm. yeah. You gotta go in and out. And walk yeah. around. And they're happy to do it. I mean, really, the, the Central High School campus was the best spot because of super centrally located, right yeah. on the border, mm -hmm. easy in, easy out. Uh, I'm Two hoping that we can bring them back in the fold and get it done. So, uh, But besides uh, the spring and fall cleanup, there's a whole host of services that we provide. We do bag meat pickups for uh, residents that live in the restricted zone we have our hazardous waste day uh, we do our yard waste dumpsters uh, we put money in here for storm damage dumpsters so if we have a big storm we basically pop a dumpster out there hey you can bring your uh, storm damage in garlic mustard dumpster these are all super popular um, services and well we get almost out of everything this is what we get the most bang for our buck on so um, but again same cost that's been budgeted for these as in the previous years Street lights, this one is pretty simple. 60% uh, of the cost of the 90 DA street lights are reimbursed through the street light uh, special assessment district. Uh, so we pay all the bills, except for the ones in the DDA, the ones in the DDA are paid by the DDA. Um, and then you guys approved the warrant at the last meeting. Uh, part of the, that cost goes on to the, the tax bills. Basically, if you live within 300 feet of a, of a street light, it ends up being somewhere between 10 and $30 a house of your houses. I apologize, I'm going a little bit faster now. It's just, uh, I've been rambling on, so. Uh, I'll raise the speed limit average anyway. All right, there we go. <laughs> uh, so transportation, uh, you can see this has got this uh, downtrend here. Uh, and that's really because uh, in, so in fiscal year 2020, um, the bus, uh, we got reimbursed for a bunch of costs through COVID funds. Fiscal year 2021 is when we made the decision and the DDA made the decision for all those costs for the 28th Street line uh, to go to the DDA, but it was made uh, later in the year. Uh, and then 2022 will be the first year where the full cost of the 28th Street line is in the Downtown Development Authority. Uh, so really here, there's only a couple things. Uh, so our transportation services line item, this is our door-to-door -door specialized transportation through the whole network. Um, I've kept the money in the budget here, um, but as it stands right now, all of our ridership, except any rides after 20 per person each month, are covered by CDBG funds. Um, so, like when the when we get with the final cost for 2020, even though we've budgeted $36,000, there's a good chance that we're going to spend less than $10,000 on this fund uh, because a majority of it's covered through CDBG. The problem is, is that as this service, if it gets more popular, those CDBG funds are, are finite. So I would recommend if we want to make sure that this service is always available to our residents, uh, that we keep this money in here. So uh, if we, their budget is on the uh, July to June budget rather than the December to, uh, or January to December budget. So if we get to May or the beginning of June and those CDBG funds run out, there's an opportunity for the township to say, okay, we will we will foot the bill for this until the CDBG funds are renewed again. Um, so we used to budget community development block grants. So basically it's a slug of money that comes down through the federal government uh, and our residents are able to get door-to-door -door specialized transportation through the uh, through the, that process. And I see the whole network out here quite a bit. Yeah. Yeah. Um, are there any restrictions then that are put on the township to accept those funds and strings? No. So we don't actually, they changed it about three years ago. So we used to have to accept the funds and then put them into the program. They changed it. So now the county just accepts the funds. Uh, so it just allows our residents to be, to have access to them. So uh, we do pay $18 a ride. If the, we have a resident that uses over 20 rides a month, uh, we typically have 
one or two residents that use more than their 20 ride allocation each month. Um, and then other than that, we would only have to pay if, um, if the CDBG funds run out for some reason. Uh, so we do sell go bus tickets uh, through the front office. Uh, we used to subsidize them 50 cents a piece. We don't do that anymore. So we pay $3.50 a ticket. We sell them for $3.50 a ticket. So there's a revenue item that's associated with this as well. We got the bus service for 33rd and 36th Street. Uh, the general fund does cover 100% of that route. Um, and that contract actually this year is set to be reconsidered in May. So the, uh, the ITP group, uh, when they went through the revenue uh, model, uh, basically said that we were in May of 2021, basically said that we're willing to do this for a year and then we're going to reevaluate. So instead of it coming up for renewal in October, it comes up for renewal in May. Uh, but the Township Board will uh, have a shot at that um, in May of 2022. And ITP is what? Interurban Transit Department? Interurban oh, yeah. Transit. Do we do our own analysis of that? I, I'm not saying it's bad or good at all. I just don't know anything about it. Has it been evaluated? See how popular it is or have our businesses? Have we gotten any business feedback or do they participate at all? Do they help pay? So, no, they don't help pay. Um, and it was actually developed at the, the route was developed at the request of the businesses and uh, revolves around their shift changes. So, whereas the 28th Street, well, the DDA doesn't, have full service for 28th Street anymore, but you know back when they did, it ran just like all the other bus routes do. This one is only 15 trips a day, and it is based around the shift changes at the uh, facilities there. You know, as as society changes, and this was established quite a few years ago. As society changes, perhaps they're not being utilized by the workers like what they were. And I'd like to have some analysis if we've got. Sanders Community Development Director that that we look into ourselves instead of just relying on the county because the <coughs> mayor from the county is fantastic in use and we can do the same ridership analysis we do for the 28th Street route. Yeah, but I'd like to do it. I don't want to rely on the, and the county numbers are <coughs> pro county every time. Yeah. You can have an empty bus go by and the numbers would just look fantastic if we got it from the county, I think. Hmm. No. Hmm. I mean, if you listen to the county, they we don't have enough bus service. It's very expensive. Okay, next slide. Sorry. No problem. Uh, so we got our, our planning department. Uh, so uh, just so happened that even though we made some changes, the expenditures for this department came out pretty even for next year. Uh, so right now, the uh, uh, full-time employees that are budgeted in this department are uh, planning director, the economic development slash DDA director, the zoning administrator, and front desk clerk. Um, and that the community development director position was eliminated, replaced with the planning director position, and the planner was eliminated, and replaced with the zoning administrator position. Uh, so right now, Brian Hillbrands is serving as our uh, interim planning director. Again, has been doing a bang up job. I've uh, been getting a lot of positive feedback about his skill set and his abilities. Uh, he's put in a lot of extra work. Um, so I would anticipate that um, uh, he would be promoted to the full time uh, planning director instead of the interim, uh, and that we would replace um, the planning position with a zoning administrator. The zoning administrator would be responsible not only for the uh, zoning related ordinance issues, but they would be responsible for the general ordinance related issues as well. So that would be their primary uh, responsibility. <laughs> uh, we do have a 18 week uh, summer intern program that partners with the zoning administrator. Uh, they go out and really are eyes and the ears in public spaces. Uh, help with uh, you know, dogs in the parks and signs on the corners and a lot of that basic uh, administrative stuff. And then the um, costs, uh, the uh, wages for our planning commission and zoning board of appeals are in this casual department as well. A couple items in the special projects. So, uh, we've been talking. Sorry, yeah. I got it, but I know what you're going to say. All right. <laughs> I, 
We have one person you're going to appoint at the next meeting to the planning commission for one short. There's, oh, yeah, and then there's two. So every year there's two. But just the, the one replacement. There's an empty vacancy right now, yeah. Do you know, who that, do you know who that person is going to be? I'm in my head floating around. Do you know what position he has in the private sector? No, because there's a few people floating around in my head. Okay. Where I was going with this is that we've got uh, an architect, we've got an attorney, we've got business owners are all on this planning commission. Uh, these guys go out and do their pre pre inspection trips. They go out site site plans, go out and look at the site, and uh, these guys are spending a lot of time. They're not uh, Wendy's guys flipping burgers. They're they're all good guys, and we're paying them forty five bucks a meeting. We're way low on that. Um, I checked at the MTA, but most of the uh, township associations don't report what they're doing. But um, I think eight is even at 80 a meeting. But um, I think we need to bump that up. So, so you have to go to the personal finance committee. Well, I just thought I'd put it here to the budget. <laughs> then you guys can deal with it here. All right, this is a board budget work session, Tim. I just want to put it out there <coughs> that uh, I think. Didn't we? I thought. Uh, did I hear that we up the board review? We did. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, so they do. I mean, they spend a whole day, a uh, couple days in a row. But I mean, usually when we have questions like that, like I have no issue just doing a little survey around the area, figuring out what everybody's saying. And yeah. If we bump them up, we bump them up. So. What are the other paid? Um, Boards or commissions besides those two? Anybody else? Just nope. The zoning board of appeals, the planning commission, and the board of review. Okay. Can you put that on your? Yep. Um, tactical urbanism has been in here for uh, a couple years now. I know the DDA is uh, uh, talking about what they want to do as a partner in this. Basically, what tactical urbanism means is that it's an opportunity to test out a project before you do it. Uh, so an example is um, over in the city of East Bend, and say we're talking about putting bump outs, you know, on the side of roads to help slow speeds down. But instead of just building the curb and you know hoping that it worked, they actually built it with hay bales and signage and all of that. And then it did a study to see if it actually helped slow down speeds or not. So uh, there's a little bit of money in here to uh, partner with the DDA on some of those tactical urbanism items. Uh, and then Parks and Recreation Master Plan next year. So the Parks Committee uh, interviewed um, potential consultants today and we've been making a recommendation to the Township Board in December for Parks and Recreation Master Plan consultants for 2022. Boy, Brian and the park, Brian Hilbrand and the Parks Committee have just been talking about underpaid. <laughs> doing a great job. Yeah. Uh, then our parks, uh, again, <coughs> right around the same area for the past couple of years. Uh, this is really general maintenance items for all of our uh, parks. Uh, there is a little bit extra money in here for entrance drive work at McGraw Park next year. So. Uh, we don't get a lot of visitors out there, but the gravel drive that goes into the park is in pretty poor condition. Uh, I actually talked to a couple members, uh, parents from the crew team. So you remember that park is shared between the township and the school. They own the area that the um, uh, crew shed is on. Uh, so they talked about wanting to partner with us to make some improvements out there to that drive. So. Chances are we will do that in the, in the spring. I've gotten some calls on that in the spring. They can't get back there. The water's too high. Yeah, it's like a lot. So we're never going to be able to do anything about that. Uh, but part of the 6.30. What time do you want to leave at? I'll leave here about five minutes, too. All right. Um, part of the issue is um, that even when it's done flooding, there is a floodplain drainage path that runs right across, right across that drive. drive so and it washes it out in the spring uh, so we got a lot of um late this fall uh, we had a little bit of flooding back there they're asking if we could go put some more material and drain it and i tell them that 
know, if we do that, it's just going to wash out in the spring, you know, really after the floods in the spring, we're trying to do that. So uh, we'll take a look at that. <coughs> There's a small equipment line item to be able to replace blowers and weed whips and whatnot in the parks department. Uh, historical, uh, this is a pretty uh, basic one, put a little bit of extra money in here. Uh, they need to have some window work and painting done at, at the museum. Uh, we contribute $7,000 a year to the Historic Society based on an agreement with them that they will uh, um, keep the artifacts in there and have it open to the public when they can. So that's a pretty good partnership and they always appreciate the money that comes from the township. And each year they have to put together uh, reports uh, that says what they did in the past year, what they're doing uh, in the upcoming year, and what their uh, financing funding looks like. And the board gets that every year before we cut the check. Uh, benefits insurance, we'll talk about after general uh, special fund expenditures as well. Um, capital outlay, just a small amount of capital outlay next year. Um, so we had planned on a generator for this building. Uh, we didn't get that to that this year, so I pushed that out to the um, budget for 2022. Uh, Bobcat utility vehicle, Z master replacements and grandstand replacements. Those are all buildings and grounds, um, uh, pieces of equipment that need to be replaced on a regular schedule. Uh, and then the land improvement, I did put money uh, in there for the recreation park. Uh, we have some lots of drives out there that need some uh, tender love and care next year so uh, we've got that in there uh, but really you know besides these basic items my thought was is that we really should be plugging in any big capital improvements until we know what comes out of the strategic plan uh, so pretty light on capital improvements this year. For the Bobcat and Z-Master didn't we address that this year in 2020? No so that was a different couple of pieces of equipment. Oh okay. It was in the CFP though. Well, we they were in stock yeah. Okay. In Fire Station One, would that be so? Where? Yeah, so Fire Station One isn't in here yet um, because that'll be you know. So the way that process will work is uh, coming up at the uh, December fifteenth um, Public Safety Advisory Committee meeting. Um, you'll hear kind of what the price uh, is based on the design so far. Uh, I haven't heard yet, but keeping our fingers crossed, it's near uh, what we want. And then uh, once that is set, uh, then the board will have to start the process for figuring out how to bond for that. Uh, how much they want to, how much you guys want to bond as opposed to paying for cash uh, and what the debt service will be for that. So because that's all kind of up in the air, none of that appears in the budget yet, except for the preliminary engineering, uh, which is already approved. Uh, is in the fire department budget. When will we know the exact amount we're getting from the state for that you said we might be able to use for debt service? So they have told us by the end of February. Okay. And it'll just be a lump sum? No, no. So we'll get a lump sum based on what we should have got our first two checks, but then that'll be the amount that'll be based on what we get going forward for the next 10 years. Okay, then we can back into the bond, the amount of the bond, because we don't want to deplete the general fund. You know, we could probably, <clears throat> I don't know if we can pay cash, but we can pay for a good share of it, but that would be foolish. We want a bond for it. And uh, we, could, we started some scenarios, but we didn't finish them. Yeah. And bonding, bond rates are probably down now, too. Yeah, we should start that when, with, with, our, with our bond rating. We there's no way we should have an interest rate that's anywhere <coughs> near even two percent. You know, no. should be uh, over half the one percent range. Yeah. Okay. And then we have our transfers, basically the same costs every year. Uh, so we have a transfer that goes from the general fund to the fire fund, uh, four hundred thousand dollars. Uh, there's a ballot language that says that the township will make that transfer every year as long as economic conditions are steady. And then we develop a little resolution that says that. So uh, that will be presented as part of the bar, uh, budget process. Will that be at the meeting on the 15th? Yeah. Okay. And then uh, cemetery. Uh, uh, so we'll be working on possible fee increases for the cemetery uh, kind of first quarter. Um, if those fee increases are approved by the board, the idea is that 
those would actually go into the cemetery trust fund uh, rather than the uh, general fund. The idea would be able to build up those funds in the trust fund. So if there's eventually a need for another improvement in the cemetery, they could be paid for from the trust fund rather than the general fund. Debt service, just know that we don't have any debt service right now, um, but that uh, first quarter of 2022, we'll have you having lots of conversations about uh, with the fire station number one funding that service looks like. What about the DDA one? Is that different? Yeah, so there is, so I should say that there's no general fund debt service. Uh, so there is, um, we currently have two bonds outstanding. Uh, so we have our open space bond uh, and we have the tucking muffler um, installment loan. Uh, those are the only two right now, but there's no general fund debt service. So cemetery trust fund, uh, we don't spend a lot of money out of here. Uh, this generates, um, we have a cemetery care fee. Essentially anybody who has been um, given a grave site in the past, but has moved out of the township, uh, they have to pay a $10 a year fee to be able to keep that grave site. It generates about $5,000 a year. That goes right into the trust fund. Um, Good. <laughs> is, that a lot of is that the fee you're thinking about increasing? Not this fee specifically, um, but just the our cemetery fees in general haven't increased in a long time. Um, so we're looking opening at grade. increasing the open and closing grades. Yeah. What do we charge for that? 500. What are we thinking of charging? So we're just kind of doing a study right now to see what other people are doing and. Um, uh, doing a cost analysis to see what it actually costs us to to do that do that work. Especially since we won't charge the site. Yeah. Um, and the only expenditures that come out of here is that uh, if we do any monument restoration, so if we go out and power wash a monument or fix one that's been you know broken, you know professionally it comes out of here, and then the flags and the flag holders uh, when we pay for them come out of here as well. <coughs> Uh, so fire departments, uh, you can see the fire department revenues slowly increasing uh, over the years to 2.6 million. Um, let's start going through these. Uh, these are all going to look the same to you, so don't have to spend uh, a lot of time on them. Uh, we have the community stabilization share for the fire department at uh, just over $38,000 this year. So you're going to see some funds that do have a little bit more interest than other funds. And the only difference in those funds is gonna be, there's gonna be a CD that matures this year. So mm -hmm. we recognize the interest revenue from CDs maturing when they mature. Um, fire department doesn't have one of those this year. Uh, so the uh, those investments are, are small. Again, the $400,000 general fund transfer being recommended. Uh, there's also a <coughs> transfer that goes from the building fund to the fire fund to help cover a quarter of the fire inspections team. So we have a fire marshal and a fire inspector. Uh, out of their 80 hours a week, they spend uh, 20 hours of that in the building department. So basically a quarter of their combined costs comes out of the building department as well. Uh, here's your expenditures. Uh, we knew this was coming, but the fire department is getting expensive fast. Um, so back in 2017 and 2018, when we made the recommendation to increase the uh, staffing at the fire department, uh, we knew that that increase in staffing was going to put the fire department in a structural deficit. Uh, and the idea behind that structural deficit was that we were going to spend down the fund balance in the fire department for a few years. And then when the millage came up for renewal in 2023, 2024 budget, uh, we would address it then. Uh, so we are in that process now. Um, so this is really the only fund that we have out of all of our funds that's in a deficit this year. Um, but the firefighter salary covers the chief, the fire marshal inspector, three captains, three fire lieutenants, 12 firefighters, and administrative assistant. Again, we have the assignable salary uh, in this department, just like we do with the other departments. Uh, overtime and paid on call. Usage is really going to be dependent on the effects of COVID on the department and could be under budgeted. 
Um, I will say that we have had quite a few COVID cases on staff in our fire departments uh, over the uh, uh, past couple of months. Um, and then we're starting to see more COVID cases in the community as well. Um, so really that, that those numbers, you know, the overtime and paid on call, when you have that type of variance is really where you see those numbers try to start to flux back and forth. So we budgeted for a normal year, uh, but could see those those flux if we have uh, if we have issues. A uh, whole host of line items in the, the fire department. Uh, you're seeing some increases in a, a couple of these. Uh, the fire training is the combined training and education for the whole department. Uh, we do have some new line items this year, uh, small uh, dollar amounts, but uh, Chief is trying to subcategorize these because he has different people in his department responsible for these programs. So when they're all in one line item, you know, those people that are responsible for those programs have a hard time visualizing what exactly they have to spend on the program that they're in charge of because uh, they don't deal with the budget on, on a regular basis. So uh, we have a fire prevention slash investigation line item now, a tech rescue line item now, and a health and wellness line item now. Uh, so those can be the people that are in charge of those programs uh, know exactly uh, what they have to spend. Communications here is a combination of all the phone data and technology uh, in the department for both facilities. Um, Vehicle maintenance, uh, actually last year was separated from equipment maintenance, again, to give us a better picture of exactly what we're spending on the vehicle and the fact that the vehicle maintenance is overseen by a different person that oversaw the equipment maintenance. Um, uh, utilities are all combined into one line item. We don't know what our lease facility utility rate is going to be yet. Uh, so we kind of just uh, budgeted a general number for that. Um, but uh, apparently I can't spell either, I apologize. <laughs> Um, but that is in there as well. Um, so right now, capital outlay, uh, the only item we have in the capital outlay is for already approved uh, pre-bidding engineering work for the project. Uh, and then once uh, that is up, then again, we'll have to figure out uh, what that is. But you can see, even with that, I mean, this number is included in here, but that, that deficit number is starting to become significant. Um, so we're going to start to see that spend down of that fund balance in that fire department. Uh, and Chief and I are already starting to work on uh, what that millage rate might have to look like the next time it's improved uh, in order to continue to fund the fire department at the level that we're Have you run it out to the uh, end of the millage to see if we're going to have enough? Yeah, so we have done that. Uh, it, it, it buys it down to about a half million dollars. Okay. And that's with our 400,000 contribution. Yes. Okay. Uh, any questions about the fire departments? Again, benefits discussed after the general expenditures. Uh, so the overall police fund revenues, uh, any fluctuation in here is really based on those interest rates coming in and, and going out, uh, because other than that, really the only revenues we collect in here uh, are related to the, the tax collections. Um, all this stuff, again, the same. Community stabilization share for the police department this year is just over 13,000. Uh, and we do have a little bit of interest uh, on investment revenue here because we have a CD matures that matures in fiscal year 2022. Here's our expenditures, um, 690, 400 for 2021. 691 for 2022. Uh, so sheriff's protection, this is where most of the money uh, comes from. Budget estimate from the Kent County Sheriff's Department it's based on uh, budget levels plus 3%. Um, that's what they always tell us every year when I ask them what the budget. They say just increase what you budgeted last year by 3%. Uh, so that's what we've, we've done. Uh, again, eliminated the transfer. Um, so uh, the assistant township manager position doesn't exist, so we've uh, eliminated that transfer. Uh, so we'll note that we have in this fund $142,000 budget surplus for next year, um, and really no plan for the budget surplus in the uh, police department fund right now. So uh, one of the things that we've talked about is adding a second community development or a community policing officer in partnership with the other East Precincts. 
Um, but absent of that, we got to kind of figure out how these funds are going to be spent. Um, or uh, if there isn't any intention to spend them, there would be an opportunity to lower the millage uh, when it comes up for comes up for renewal again. If we're still for the precinct, and we had talked for quite a while over the last year, at least over the past year, about additional coverage in Cascade, especially because so much gets sucked into the hotel area. Um, so it's in partnership with these precincts, but really it's just us paying for additional coverage, right? It doesn't affect. So, yep, yeah, so we've done it both ways. So, like when we had our issues with the hotels this year, uh, we actually just paid directly. The township paid for those additional patrols for them to go out and do that and there's an opportunity for us to do that um, or there's an opportunity for us to increase the scope of the entire east precinct to, for all of us to have more resources um, grand rapids township especially with the additional community policing officer uh, is on board with that conversation ada is working through an increased public safety millage right now their intention is to include that in that public safety millage uh, but we won't, don't know what, exactly what that looks like until they until they finish up. So, from our perspective, we have the money to do either or both. You know, we have enough money to make our additional contribution for an additional community policing officer and buy additional patrols if we wanted to. I mean, that's how much our surplus is right now. If we want to keep it to Cascade, like to make sure that Cascade gets the benefit, if we just buy additional patrol time. We could buy additional patrol time. You know, the other thing we talked about is us just having our own community develop our community development, sure. community policing officer in Grand Rapids Township and Ada splitting the other community policing officer. They would still work with each other, so you'd have crossover coverage. Um, but I mean, Omar has been pretty clear that that we use more of his time than those other places do. So there's there's a couple different opportunities, and I imagine at some point this year. The Public Safety Advisory Committee will make a uh, recommendation as to what we should do. You want to get going? Oh, keep going. All right. So the Hazmat Fund. Um, this is a partnership fund that we do with uh, Gaines Township and Caldone Kentwood. Sorry, Gaines Township and Kentwood. So we have one Hazmat response team. Each one of the communities throws $2,000 into the kitty each year to keep the supplies up. Uh, we have a trailer uh, that's towed around. So if there's a call out for hazmat in any of the communities, each uh, community has a, a couple firefighters that can send to the scene. Trailer shows up um, and uh, we go on. So we're slowly drawing down the funds in this uh, department just because they got built up for so long. Um, talking to Chief, it sounds like everybody's comfortable with us again. Just making a two thousand dollar contribution, um, and they are always looking for additional partners. So uh, they will uh, continue to do that. Uh, I think this line has been on this slide every year that I've been doing this presentation, and we still just have a few communities. But uh, new other partners are always good. Any questions about the hazmat? Who's the other partner besides Gang Open space fund. Um, you know what? I just realized I'm gonna I'm monopolizing the township Zoom, and the planning commission is going to have to use the Zoom as well. So I'm probably going to have to turn off the Zoom. Are we, thing was early, up, are we okay with that? Don't really have a choice, right? He's on the plan. Yeah. So we have no attendees right now. Are you guys okay if I? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, but end at the bottom. Okay. Yeah, there you go. Here, there. 